morning. I'm Gail Anderson and this is Mentoring Moments for Moms. Hi Poppy Bear. Poopsie Bear, nice to see you this morning. Anyway, we are going to be talking about things of course that concern moms. Hi Kelly, how are you this morning? Good to see you. Um, we get on probably three, four times on weekdays and talk about things that concern moms. I like to hear from all of you and today we're going to be starting what is kind of like a series where I'm going to talk about the top 10 things I would do again as a mom. As you can tell, I'm a mom and a grandma. So all my kids are grown out of the house. So I'm going to talk about some of those things during the years that they were at home. Um, my email is in my profile, so if you want to get a hold of me or give me comments, questions, more information, ideas of things you'd like to hear about, please go ahead and email me. Also in my profile is the link to my YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel, um, I do have all the saved broadcast or scopes that I've done. So you can see, even if you've missed out. Hi all of you, just great to have you on this morning. So today, it's just gonna be kind of an intro. And what I wanna do is tell you my impression of mothering in the first place. And I'd also like to hear from you guys. How were you when your first child came? So for me, I always loved kids. Babysat all the time. I was second oldest of six. Absolutely loved taking care of them. Loved teaching them. My heart is a teacher. Child development was my uh, major in college. So everything I did revolved around kids. Oldest of seven, okay. And I taught school. I volunteered in schools. Oh my gosh, I just loved kids. But when I had my own, it was a little bit different. All of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, I am responsible 24 seven. And then I sat there and thought, ooh, do I really know what to do? I always knew what to do with kids when I was babysitting, when I had my brothers and sisters, but taking care of my own was a little bit different. The first thing I experienced was depression. Any of you admit to that, that when you had your first child, it, it was a little bit depressing. You went through that change where you had the blues for, for me, it was a while. <laughs> um, let me hear from you guys on that. One of the things that was very interesting, yes, very rough. And it's so wild because you want to have kids. I mean, that was my whole goal in life was to be a mom. And yet having my own, it was just like, oh my gosh, it was different. I remember my husband coming home for lunch. He did it on a regular basis because we didn't live too far from the church where he worked. And um, I mean, one day I was just in tears and I said, can I come back to work with you? And he said, yes. So we brought the swing, we brought the baby and we went to work for the afternoon with him. I was just depressed. Now I had a car to get out, that wasn't the issue. But it seemed like whenever I was out or away from the house, my baby was fine. When I would come home, the depression would set in and he would be crying all the time. And I thought I had a handle on how to take care of kids, but somehow I just wasn't doing those best things for my son at that time. My life just seemed really out of whack. It was really difficult. And I think part of it was, I guess you could say it was a child-centered home at that point. I just did everything around the baby. I let him control things. Any of you do that with your first? Things change when you have more, but with my first, that's what I did. So I wanna hear from you guys. Anybody else go through that depression after they first had a baby? Just wasn't all, didn't ever want kids my whole childhood into mid-20s, okay? So did your attitude change, mama? Um, hopefully it did after you have your own, but it took me a while to get over that. I mean, my son, it seemed like I didn't know people who had nursed before and it was just starting to come back in vogue. And the only people I had really around me who had nursed were people in church. And those gals said, hey, whenever he's hungry and cries, nurse him. So I was nursing this baby all the time. Not really on a schedule. The Lord changed your heart in your late 20s. Excellent, and you loved it. Never went anywhere and would stay in my PJs all day every day. Hey. This is real life, moms. We are talking about what it is like. 
First baby at 29 lasted 43, didn't have a schedule. So there's a point right there that we will be talking about later in this series is having a schedule because that was one of the worst things that I did. Raising Arrows Academy, I love that name. You're obviously a homeschooler who follows after the Lord. I had overactive letdown. Nursing was rough with my first. You know, I didn't have trouble with nursing, although I could only nurse laying down when I came home from the hospital. Crazy, crazy thing. I finally figured it out later. But as I said, I was nursing all the time, so I was really ruled by my child, and I was also getting up. My second baby was rough as well. My husband left. Oh, bless your heart. That had to be very difficult. And navigating that, you really need some good friends, some close confidants where you can talk through that stuff, a mentor where you have someone who can tell you, okay, this is normal, don't worry about it. I was getting up with my first son in the middle of the night until he was nine months old. At his nine month old doctor visit, the doctor said, give him a pacifier, don't be feeding him. And I, I don't know, I just didn't know any better. Sure, I had babysat, I had taken care of my own uh, brothers and sisters, but I didn't have that all night part where I was responsible for either. It's just so funny with all the training that I had, with all the experience. Hey, glad to be there, thank you. Um, with all the experience I had, I still, it was just a total shock into motherhood and very difficult for me to be able to get going. Um, it, of course, it got better with numbers two, three, four, five, and I will share about that as we go through these top 10 things I would do again as a mom. Um, but really, it, it was difficult for me. And what I want to do with all of you after I can so relate to this, yes, Kelly, <laughs> hard to admit, but after all this time, I realize that these are the things that can help you moms. If you at least realize you're not alone, that what you're experiencing is normal. I mean, I thought something was wrong with me. How could this possibly be that I didn't like mothering after all this prep, all this experience, all this goal orientation toward being a mom? It was just very hard for me, very hard. Just difficult to get back to my normal thing. And it was not what I expected. Now, after having five, of course, I'd say by number two, things got better. Number three, I really got things down and life was, life was much better. Busy, still required a lot of pointed things that I did, a lot of decisions that I had to make. And those are some of the things that I'm gonna share with you as we walk through this for the next few weeks, the top 10 things that I would do, again, as being a mom. Um, I'm a mom now, but it's of adult children. So I'm looking back at that time when the kids are at home and the things that if I were doing it again, these are the things I would say, hey, I did them right. Didn't do them the whole way through, but things that I picked up all the way through motherhood. Thank you for those hearts. If you like what I'm saying and you agree with it, please give me some hearts, show me some love. So anyway, these are things that we'll be talking about that I highly recommend that I would do again, and that hopefully will be things that you can glean from, that can help you on your path for motherhood. Basically, the things that I'm gonna be talking about, if you do them consistently, and you do them over the long haul, you keep doing them and doing them, even though you might not see results, they are going to yield results. With my five kids right now, I have a very close relationship with them, they have a very close relationship with each other, a great relationship with their dad, and so I know that some of the things we did paid off. So that's what I'm gonna do over the next little while is go over these things that I feel like made the biggest difference. And I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll think about questions or concerns that you have. I hope you'll email me, and I love it when you guys give me comments while I'm scoping so that others can hear from you and you can connect with each other but that's the goal over the next few weeks. But I did want to tell you a little bit about my background. Um, I, I guess another thing I should tell you is that I am a pastor's wife. Been a pastor's wife for 36 years, maybe, 37 years, almost since we first got married. And it was a wonderful experience, but it had a lot of challenges as well. So put all that. How did we decide to have five? Great question. We had, um, be, before we got engaged, we named two babies first two babies, a boy, Joshua, and a girl, Rachel. We had those names picked out. 
So of course we had our first and we had Joshua. And we actually like to pray and believe before we had our children. So the second one we thought would be Rachel and it was Jared. And then we thought, okay, two is great. We're satisfied with two, this is wonderful. Besides that, I had life really by the tail at that point. I had gotten it figured out, everything was so easy. I thought, man, this is great, we'll just do this. Well, by the time Jared got to be about two years old, I started having that baby fever again. And it is the funniest thing, but both my husband and I remember when we sat down and were thinking about this, maybe Jared was two and a half by this time, something like that, and we thought, okay, let's think about Christmas times. Do you think the kids are gonna come home, both boys? Oh, wait a minute, what if they go to both of their wives' homes for Christmas and nobody comes to our house for Christmas? So we literally decided we are going to have more kids. We definitely decided on the third, we prayed and believed, we actually asked the Lord for twins. Doesn't run in the family, but we had always thought it'd be fun to have twins. And I like even numbers, so twins would have been great. So we got pregnant, had another baby, that was our Jesse our third born, and the funniest thing happened. When Jesse was six months old, I got pregnant again. I do not know how to this day. And we had twin girls, Rachel and Rebecca. Definitely are exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask and think. That was, uh, you never thought of the Christmas thing. <laughs> that was literally what changed our mind. And we had to do a lot when the third came to get ready um, for him and get things down to a schedule and routine and different things we could do to make it easier. But when I went to the doctor, I thought I had the flu. I went to the doctor when I was pregnant with the twins, thought I had the flu, and I'm like, he said, I wanna do a pregnancy test. Didn't do an exam or anything. I'm like, no, 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 I just had a baby six months ago. And he's like, well, let's just do a pregnancy test anyway. So he does the pregnancy test and comes back into the room and says, congratulations, mom. And I just started laughing. I just could not believe I was pregnant again. It was crazy. And of course, I almost couldn't believe that I actually had twins. What a gift from God. It was uh, actually one of the most thrilling things that ever happened to me, still is. Absolutely love it. So that's how we wound up with our five. At the point that we had those, and we had the last three so quickly, I was extremely busy, loved it, but was extremely busy, and uh, didn't really want to consider having another because of how busy we were. But the other thing, if you can believe it, is having twins was so thrilling that I did not think I could have a singleton after that. I just didn't think it would compare. If I was ever down after I had my twins, you know, just feeling like, oh, this is overwhelming, I would pack all the kids up, I would go to the mall, I'd put the twins in cute clothes, put them in their double stroller, and man, it was like we were celebrities walking through the mall. We got so much attention. I'm being honest with you, okay? <laughs> I only had three and would do anything to have a surprise like that. <laughs> it was awesome. But the comments I got from people were very mean. Um, when I'd have this baby sitting here, you know, here I'm still nursing that six month old baby and I got pregnant um, and they'd say, don't you know how this is happening? Oh my gosh, you're nuts, what are you gonna do? And I just wanted to say sometimes, um, hey, I, I'm just gonna decide which girl I like the best and give the other one away. I mean, what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take care of them, I'm gonna feed them, I'm gonna <laughs> nurture them. I just did not like the comments people made when I was pregnant. Afterward, everyone, you know, seemed to be really excited about the twins, so that was great. And in our church, it was basically the big news of the century. Um, yeah, we were very prominent in the church. It was a large church, and I mean, we had to do an announcement from the stage about finding out it was twins, and then again, when they were born, so pretty exciting. But um, that's about all I have for today. <laughs> great comeback. <laughs> I don't know if I've actually told my girls that I actually said that, but I, people can be so mean sometimes. You really have to take it with a grain of salt when you're pregnant and even when you have a lot of little ones. And they are blessings from the Lord, definitely. But we decided that our quiver was full at five. Did I homeschool your others while they were little bitty and you had the twins? Yes. I was able to do that, first of all, because my six and a half year old was very mature and very helpful. 
and all the kids were able to help each other. It was really cool. We had um, a school room, and then right next door we had like a, an upstairs family room. So we had the girls play there. Um, I could put a video on if I wanted, but I didn't usually do that. And I could have the other boys, as they were taking a break, go help the twins. Um, even the youngest, who was, you know, 16 months older than them, was able to go. I get that you have your hands full, comment. <laughs> yes. Um, we all do. But you know what? It's a great way to be. So raising arrows, you've got three, five, and seven. Yes, but I loved having them close. It was awesome. Um, I felt like I was a very young mom the whole time. I had them all by the time I was 30, so that was wonderful. Plus, I mean, if you're giving baths, why give one bath for 30 years? You know, let's just, okay, do, do the baths all together, do all the stuff together. And homeschooling, we got by quite well because um, we were able to have the older boys help the younger ones. And that was just awesome. I mean, yes, there were lots of challenges, but we got through them and we did well. And I actually, if you go to our blog, kirbyanderson.com, the link is in the profile, you will also be able to, oh, raising arrows. Well, maybe you can adopt sometime if you're not able to have any more now. If you go to the link in my profile and check out our blog, I have probably three or four homeschooling articles on there that you might find very helpful if you are a homeschooler. So yes, we did homeschool. A lot of hints for that on getting through that. Um, I always tell people that I had chances every year to think, what am I doing? I want to quit. But I would just really sit down, work out the problems, and go through it. And just by the way, when I did start homeschooling, I did not make the decision to homeschool them through high school. I made the decision to homeschool my boys through second grade. And then after that, it was a year by year decision. I never made the commitment to keep on doing it all the time. And that was one of the things that helped me is one by one. So yeah, I'll have to do some scopes on homeschooling. That'd be fun, especially to have your reactions during it. But I have a phone call to make, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. But I will be on tomorrow and be talking about the number one thing that I would do again as a mom. So hopefully, join us on Homeschool Scopes TV. Awesome, yeah, great to hear from you guys. And I hope you have an awesome day. You know, mothering is an adventure and we need to get together, we need to support one another, we need to share, and we need to keep our focus on God to get us through things. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow. There we go.